Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about thesis statements because they're extremely important to your essay. Obviously, yours will not be exactly like this. Um, as you go through, you definitely need to remember that with your essay, you need to have four pieces that you analyze and discuss in regards to what you think makes us human. Obviously, one's going to be Frankenstein. That is a requirement. And then two others have to be from stuff we've read in class. And then that last piece is an original piece that you research and find yourself. Uh, I am going to talk to you guys about, in another video, about how to find scholarly articles because to me, that would be the easiest route to go with this last piece, finding an article that will support your ideas about being human. But that's a whole other video, so we're not going to get into that in this particular video. In this video, we are going to focus on your thesis statement and how to create it and things that you should do with a thesis statement and things you should not do with a thesis statement. So... Um, first thing I want to explain, and this is not to insult your intelligence, a lot of people are not aware of what a thesis statement truly is. Um, a thesis is your opinion. It is the opinion that, more importantly, you want to prove or you intend to back up. It is the focus of your entire paper your whole paper should be focused on your thesis. And it's what all your quotes and explanation should be directed towards. Everything. Um, to be very concise with it, it's a subject and an opinion. Obviously, your subject has already been given to you. It's the idea of what makes us human. And then your opinion with it. We are going to, or I want you to create what's called a closed or structured thesis. And I will show you what that is. So what we have here are essentially bad thesis statements. Each one of these, there is something wrong with them and that something that needs to be fixed. So obviously, normally in class, I would go through this and we would discuss this and talk about why there are issues. We don't really have that ability. So I'm going to go through and talk about each one, but I am going to give you a little bit of time with each one to kind of think about what you think might be wrong with it. So this first one says in the book, Frankenstein, Mary Wollstonecraft shows us how finding true happiness is what defines us as being human. All right, so in your head, I want you to just kind of read through that and think to yourself, what all is wrong with this? Okay, there's several things wrong with it. For starters, the title of a book needs to be put into italics. That's basic, but it's important that you guys know that because you are going to experience that as you write your stuff. So you do need to know what to italicize and what to put in quotation marks like you see down here with this third one, okay? So book titles go in italics. Everything else goes in quotation marks. Also, this is not actually the last name that she uses for the novel. If you're going to use her Wollstonecraft name, that's okay, but you still need to include Shelley because of the fact that the novel was published under Mary Shelley. So, well, not originally, but ultimately. So, uh, you do need to make sure that you include that part of a portion of her name that Wollstonecraft is her maiden name uh, the other big issue with this is this word right here you cannot write in first person for this essay no first person you have to be considered a sub a, I'm sorry an expert on the subject in order to write in first person. So you cannot write in first person. This is an easy fix. It's easier than you think. 
All you have to do is come up with a third person group that you use throughout. And the group would obviously be quite simple. You could say the reader. You could say her audience. Whoops. Uh, you could say society, so on and so forth. So in the book, Frankenstein, Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley demonstrates how, or you could just drop it off, which is what I would do. Instead of saying shows us, I would just say, I would up shows and use a higher level vocab word. Or you could say portrays. How finding true happiness is what defines being human. All right, so you simply just cut it off. But you've got to get rid of that S. Either way, this first thesis is ultimately bad because it uses first person, and you don't want any first person. No first person. So that is your first takeaway for what not to do with a thesis statement or in your paper at all. You should not be writing statements like, I think, I feel, I believe. So let's look at number two. Shelley's novel, Frankenstein, is a book about is a book about man creating life and showing you what it means to create life and how that makes you human. Okay. I'm going to give you just a second, but I feel like this one should be obvious. If you said something about the grammar being wrong or this being extremely repetitive, you would be accurate. This also has second person and you cannot have second person. No second person. It needs to be written in third person point of view. And when you're done... You need to go back and reread it and check for your errors because that's what's happened with this particular thesis statement. Whoever wrote this, which it was really me, but whoever wrote this didn't reread their stuff and they repeated. That's why you have this repetition is a book about is a book about. Okay. So you get, obviously you need to get rid of that. Shelley's novel, Frankenstein, which this is good. It's italicized is a book about man creating life and showing what it means to create life, that's repetitive. Why do we need this? How about we just say Shelley's novel, Frankenstein, um, shows, I, I still think that's very low level, but displays what it means to create life and how that makes one human. If you cannot figure out how to replace you, this word right here saying one is typically the best way to do it, okay? Like if you can't figure out how to drop it off, that's honestly a good way to do it. So for our second one, our big issue really is the repetitive nature of it, including information that they don't need and that you were. We got to get rid of second person. So look at three. A modest proposal and Frankenstein both demonstrate the idea of being human, What's wrong with that? Okay. This is vague. If I put that on your paper, then essentially this is what you've done. You've given me an idea, but it's really broad and it's not very specific and it's very, very vague. How do they do? And I'd probably write this. If I was grading this essay, I would say, how? Okay, how does Frankenstein and Modest Proposal demonstrate the idea of being human? Because the answer to this question, how, that's your thesis. All right, so let's look at four. Does Mary Shelley's novel, Frankenstein, truly display what it means to be human? So think for a second, what is wrong with this? The question mark. A thesis statement is literally that. It is a statement. 
equals. It can't be a question. As a matter of fact, if you're one of those people that likes to ask lots of questions in your paper, don't do that in this essay. You should not ask questions you don't answer, and you should not just write a bunch of questions to fill the paper and, you know, sound like you've got a lot going on. Not that rhetorical questions cannot be beneficial. They can be, but they can definitely be overdone, and they're not very original. I mean, it's a very common go-to. They say, oh, write an essay about being human, and people say, what does it mean to be human? And write an essay about what a, a, a true hero. What does a true hero or mean to be a true hero? Write an essay about um, the importance of sacrifice. What is sacrifice? I mean, that's people just automatically do that. So if you're one of those people that do that, write your question out and then go back and delete it after you write after it. And, and like write your question out and then just continue your thoughts. Okay, like type it in there. Continue your thoughts. And then once you have gotten that par intro paragraph written, go back to that question and delete it. Add in whatever you need to add in to make up for the, you know, missing writing. Or maybe you don't need to add in anything at all. Most people immediately turn around and answer the question. So, you know, if you delete the question, it hopefully won't affect your paper too much. But don't overdo rhetorical questions. If you do that, I am going to take off points. Uh, let's look at five. If our impulses were confined to hunger, thirst, and desire, we might be nearly free. But now we are moved by every wind that blows and a chance word or scene that may convey us. Okay. I'm not going to wait as long. I feel like this should be obvious. This is not a thesis statement. It is a quote. You can't use someone else's words for your thesis statement. It's got to be yours. And it can't include a quote at all. A thesis statement needs to be 100% your writing. There is another little issue with this. I included this because I wanted to show you this because it's very common. This period needs to be here. You put it at the end of the MLA in-text citation. All right. So now that we've looked a little bit at some things that we shouldn't do, and let's just refresh our minds just really quickly. We don't want any first person, no second person. It's got to be in third. No questions. Uh, what else did we talk about? Avoid repetition. And be specific, right? Those are all things that we're trying to watch for and make sure that we do or don't do, I guess, depending on the situation. Oh, and no quotes. Not for your thesis. Obviously, you're going to have quotes in your paper, but not in your thesis. So those are all the stuff you're, you're kind of take away from those bad thesis statements. So now right down here, you have better thesis statements but these could still be improved upon because they don't quite get that closed, structured aspect to them. So, thesis statements that meet all the criteria or that are too broad or too vague need to be adjusted. These theses need to be specific as possible. If you can include two to three main points, which in y'all's situation, you would have four, um, uh, points, but you don't like four pieces of literature that you're analyzing, but you can structure it in a different way, which I'll show you with these thesis statements, then that will, will help. That will, that you're going to be discussing in your essay, that creates that, that closed or structured thesis. So as an example, these are better thesis statements, but could still need improvement. I'm going to adjust them some right down here. I don't have a whole lot of, of room, so I'll probably erase after I adjust each one. So you can write them down as you go. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you're not taking notes over this video, I would probably re-watch and take notes, but that's just me. So a better thesis statement. Both Shelley, O'Connor, and Glasspool demonstrate the complicated nature of mankind. So essentially what I've done is I've listed out the three pieces of literature 
that I am going to be analyzing. Now, I know what you're thinking. We're supposed to have four. If I was doing this paper, my fourth piece would probably not be a piece of literature. It would be a scholarly article. And I'm going to use that scholarly article as support of my ideas all throughout rather than having a dedicated paragraph where I analyze that. So I don't, I'm not necessarily going to include it in my thesis. So essentially what I'm telling the reader is that I am going to be analyzing Frankenstein, A Good Man is Hard to Find, and Trifles. Those are going to be the three things that I'm going to analyze because I believe all three, and this is my true thesis, demonstrate the complicated nature of mankind. Now, like I said, these are good, but could definitely be improved upon. I would argue that this statement right here is extremely vague. And if I was grading your paper, I would probably say something along this lines. <clears throat> what do you mean by complicated nature? That's a very broad statement. All you would have to do is narrow that down a little bit. As a matter of fact, I may not even rewrite this one. Both Shelley, O'Connor, and Glassville demonstrate how mankind can be defined by, hmm, the terrible choices they make or something along those lines right? Because that's a little bit more specific than just their complicated nature. I don't like that one a whole lot better either, but this would definitely need to be improved upon to make it less vague. The beginning of it, I would keep the same. And the beginning of it tells my reader that this is my first paragraph, well, body paragraph. This is my second body paragraph. This is my third body paragraph. And like I said, all throughout, I would include this scholarly article to support my ideas. I might even have a fourth body paragraph where I compare all three of those things. But this is a closed structured thesis. So I've got my overall thesis idea, like what you saw in that student example. And I also have the things that I'm going to discuss, which is what you are going for, okay? Obviously, I need to make this a little bit less vague. So let's look at the next one. Human beings are defined by two attributes, passion and creation. So this one's pretty good. It's more, exp it, it's more specific, but it's missing our ideas, our overall ideas, our three things that we would want to talk about. As a matter of fact, you could combine the, this, the beginning of this with like combine one and two. Now, obviously, if you combined one and two, you would probably need to change this a little bit because passion and creation don't really go with O'Connor and Glassville because O'Connor and Glassville, those stories are both talking about really essentially the idea of murder. But you could easily change that to um, destruction, our ability to destroy, and I'm trying to think of another one that would go with all three. Desire for independence. All right. So essentially, you just rewrite this. Um, and this both really doesn't work. You say, hmm. In all three pieces, I don't like the beginning of that. Hold on. Let's do it this way. In multiple pieces of literature. Shelley, O'Connor, 
and glass spell. I cannot believe I did that, y'all. I left off the Oxford comma. I normally don't. Uh, what we want to say, human beings are defined by two attributes. And I might even change this up a little bit and say mankind. Just to kind of shorten it, because it gets a little bit wordy at the beginning. Power to destroy. And desire for independence. Period. So, essentially, what you've done is you've created a specific thesis um, that... Tells your reader that essentially this is your thesis. Mankind is defined by two attributes, the power to destroy and the desire for independence. And this is the works, the three works that you are going to be analyzing. Shelley, O'Connor, and Glassville. Of course, that's not the only way that you can do it. But this is how you improve really both one and two and make them more, that makes one more specific and that makes two more specific as well. It takes both of them and it creates that closed structured thesis so that your reader can see, I know when I read this, because I'm your reader, that your first body paragraph is going to be analyzing Frankenstein and your second body paragraph is going to analyze O'Connor and your third body paragraph is going to analyze Glassville. And then, of course, you'll have your closing. This creates your five-paragraph essay, which is not a requirement, but typically a five-paragraph essay is generally a really good essay to go with because you can, you can do a lot with that. One, you can easily add in paragraphs. Like I could add, like I said, in that fourth paragraph where I focus more on the scholarly article or where I compare all three of them and implement my scholarly article information. Or... Um, I could have a whole other paragraph where I include another author. The, another author would be easy to include in here because I said multiple pieces. I could include another one easily, um, including works by Shelley, O'Connor, Glassbill, and Twain, period. Um, now, it can create for a wordy thesis. So, I've given you some other options for how to do it to try. Because if you're not careful, this, this could get out of control and you don't want to get too far out of control with this, but you do want that structured closed thesis. So let's look at number three and four. Through analysis of several pieces, it is clear to see how being human is often defined by some terrible attributes that could result in our own downfall. First off, what is something in your head is right now that we need to fix just right off the bat. What's a, an immediate problem with this? If you said this first person, good job. You don't want that. We can't, we can't say our, okay? We need to change that our to a third person group. So I'm gonna say to society or mankind's. So through analysis of several pieces, um, this is kind of vague. This is a little bit off with my closed structure, uh, but for right now, we're going to go with it. It is clear to see how being human is often defined by some terrible attributes. This, too, is pretty vague that could result in mankind's downfall. That is the, the biggest problem with this. This needs to be solidified. So through, and why don't we, why don't we just fix this right now? Through... analysis of, let's see, I'm trying to think of off the top of my head what else we have read. Uh, let's see, The Most Dangerous Game. I always call it MDG. I've been teaching this one for so long. Um, what else? What's another one where they just did terrible, terrible stuff happened? 
Oh, I know. I need my thesis in front of me, which I don't have. Hold on, give me just a second. I know y'all are waiting. I'm almost there. I'm trying to hurry, guys. I want to pull up our thesis because I can think of one off the top of my head. I really probably should have beforehand. Obviously, a good man is hard to find would work well with this. So we'll include it as well. Oh, we've got to include Frankenstein. Oh, oh, a modest proposal kind of works with this, too. Oh, that'll work. That'll work. So, through the most dangerous game. A good man is hard to find. Frankenstein. I didn't put it in quotations because remember with book titles, you don't, I don't have a way to italicize it, but if I was typing this, I would italicize it. And what else did I say? I know you're all telling me right now and I can't hear you. A modest proposal. It is evident. Which is that what I said? What did I say? Through analysis, of, it is clear to see how being human, it is evident. Well, we can keep it clear to see. That's fine. It is clear to see. How being human is often defined by, let's see, let's say, let's do it this way, we'll say ones, so we're going to say one instead of you. Period. Okay. So, I'm going to actually leave off this end that it could result in our downfall. Because, like I said, I, I, I want to be careful of wordiness. Um, th there's nothing wrong with the idea of it leading to our downfall. But keep in mind, everything that you include in your thesis has to be argued. So, if I include that, if I were to say, could lead to our downfall, right... Sorry. Uh, I don't want to say mankind again because I've already said it, and I've said it in this paragraph, didn't I? Maybe I didn't. Oh, no, I didn't. I got to watch for repetition now. Okay, so let's say that I went this direction. First off, let's reread it. I always reread everything, and you should reread everything. So, through analysis of The Most Dangerous Game, A Good Man is Hard to Find, Frankenstein, and A Modest Proposal, it is clear to see how being human is often defined by one's propensity for violence and ultimately leads to mankind's downfall. You could, in all honesty, listening to it, it, it doesn't sound, it sounds pretty good, but thinking about this, just so that you know, this means that with each paragraph, for instance, my first paragraph is going to be about the most dangerous game, right? That's what I'm going to analyze first. So, remember, with the most dangerous game, I'm actually proving two things because my thesis has two aspects. I'm proving that we're defined by our propensity for violence and that it leads to our downfall. So, I've got to both prove that we're defined by violence and make sure I include the downfall aspect, which 
in all honesty, this thesis sounds pretty good. I actually, I mean, quite like it. However, my biggest concern would be proving these two things. If it was me, I probably would cut off this second portion. But if you kept it, it would be fine. It sounds really good. You just need to make sure that you always come back to both aspects of it. Because remember, you always need to return to your thesis and come back to that idea. And so I would definitely want to come back to this over and over and over again. So that's how you would fix the second one. If you haven't written that down, I would suggest writing that down. It gives you another good, solid example. Okay? So let's look at the last one. All right, so the biggest problem with this very last one is kind of obvious, but we'll see if you guys can catch it. I know that a lot of you have not been given a lot of background on how to write thesis statements and, the, and, and that kind of thing. So we will just go through and look at it. Shelley, Jefferson, O'Connell, and Swift all demonstrate the importance of finding your own happiness. Through Frankenstein, the Declaration of Independence, The Most Dangerous Game, and The Modest Proposal, we see how being happy is one of the most defining and important attributes to being human. So this thesis statement literally does everything you shouldn't do. The only thing that it doesn't do is include a question. And honestly, I could see this person, well, which was really me who wrote this, but I could see someone who actually would write in this manner coming right after this question, this and writing a question right at the end. So you have several issues and I'm going to go through, I'm going to talk about all the issues first. For starters, this is two sentences, not one. A thesis statement is a single sentence. It cannot be two sentences. If you, I know it's a lot of information, especially because you guys are looking at analyzing four pieces of literature possibly, or at the very least analyzing three and having that fourth scholarly article for your fourth source. But uh, it's one of those situations where you've got to make it work. You've got to just work with your thesis until you get it more concise and more precise with what you're trying to do. If I was looking at this, the very first thing I would do is get rid of this first sentence. Well, actually, I probably, for wordiness... I'd probably do it like this. Well, hold on. Let me read the second part. Because uh, you don't have to put the titles. You put the authors. We'll get rid of this for sure. You don't want we, because that's first person. Okay, so you could do this. Shelley, Jefferson, O'Connell, and Swift all demonstrate, well, you could do it either way. You could actually say Shelley, Jefferson, O'Connell, and Swift all demonstrate the importance of finding one's own happiness. Uh, you could say Shelley, Jefferson, O'Connell, and Swift all demonstrate the in, uh, importance of being, all demonstrate how being happy is one of the most defining and important attributes to being human, that's probably the direction I would go. I would probably say, uh, because then it gets rid of you for sure. Shelley, Jefferson, O'Connell, and Swift all demonstrate how being happy is one of the most defining and important attributes to being human. It works. There you go. And you've just gotten rid of all of this stuff in the middle that you just flat out don't need. I just did all that only to delete all that. Let's do it this way. Okay. So in the end, uh, when you are looking at a thesis statement, you need to ask yourself these things right down here. Okay. Is it a question? Is it a fact? Oh, that's something we didn't go over. It can't be a fact. You can't say something like Frankenstein's or Mary Shelley's book is about creation. That's a fact. If you say that Shelley wrote a novel or Shelley's novel, let's do it that way because that's more likely what y'all would say. Is 
is about creation. Yeah, true. 100% a fact. This is a fact. You can't argue this. You've got to remember that whatever your thesis statement is, it has to be an arguable point. If it is not arguable in any way, it's not an opinion. And in order to be a thesis, it's got to be a subject, which I've pretty much given you, and an opinion. Okay? Does it include unnecessary or redundant information? We've seen this in several places. You saw this right here with thesis statement number four. And you also saw it up here with this bad thesis too. So is it including unnecessary or redundant? Redundant means repetitive. information. Is it more than one single sentence? It's got to be a single sentence. Is it the last sentence of your intro? This is extremely important. And I mean, this is so important, guys. Your thesis statement needs to be the last sentence of your intro. That's where it goes. Now, as you develop your writing and you get stronger, like, you know, these people who write these scholarly articles or uh, various forms of analysis that you see, then sure, yeah, you can branch out and write about, uh, you know, write at, put your thesis further down in the paper. But I can tell you right now, even with extremely well-written, well-versed writers, their thesis is still going to be, I mean, first, second page. It's still going to be right there at the very beginning. And even if it falls over into the second page, it's going to fall before they start getting into any real analysis. It's going to happen in that intro or introductory paragraphs. The only reason why you ever see it fall further is because a lot of people have very large introductories, which for you guys, you'll just have probably a single paragraph uh, with your introductory. So it definitely needs to be that last sentence. That's where I'm going to be looking for it. And I am going to take off points if that's not where it is. Does it contain first or second person point of view? You have to write in third person. That is a requirement. Get rid of your first and your second person. Can I add specific information or outline info to improve my thesis? Is it vague, essentially, is what that's asking. Can you add specific? And you saw several up here that were vague, that like this complicated nature, right, that we turned and made more specific. So is it vague? Am I going to write things like how above your thesis, okay? So uh, those are the things that you're looking at. I hope that this helps you, this video. I know it was kind of lengthy, but it's good to go over this stuff, and I will see you guys in the next one.